file organizations. Recall our architecture of a database management system. At the top, we had a client that was taking SQL and giving it to the server. And in the bottom, we had a server which had many layers that we were beginning to study bottom up. So we are currently at the lowest layer, disk space management. Uh, but we are actually going to have a little peek today, a sneak peek at the files and index management layer as well. Recall we talked last time about heap files and how they are stored. A heap file is an unordered collection of records. And you may remember the API for any of these higher layers of the DBMS. Um, today for this API we'll be asking how does it work and at what cost. So the basic APIs for uh, heap files were to insert, delete, or modify records, to fetch a particular record by record ID, and recall that a record ID is a page ID and a location of some kind, and then to scan all the records on a particular file, possibly with some conditions on the records to be retrieved. So today we'll think about how to do each of these things. You may also remember that there was more than one file organization. Heap files were just one example. There are many alternatives that are used in database systems. Each one is good in some situations and less good in another. This is a theme in database systems uh, architecture that we often have trade-offs between multiple decisions. And so we'll implement a variety of different techniques and then choose among them intelligently in different contexts. So here there's uh, multiple file organizations we're going to look at. Heap files are suitable typically when the access pattern is a full scan of all the records. But we also had sorted files that we wanted to discuss, which we'll get to today. And these are best for retrieval of uh, records in some particular order of the data values, or when a range of records uh, according to some data values is needed. And then we'll look at what we call clustered files and indexes, which are both techniques for grouping data into blocks to enable fast lookups and efficient modifications. So more on this uh, coming up soon. Stepping back though from the details, uh, in general today we want to be asking questions like what is the best file organization? And this is going to depend on the access pattern we're currently servicing. Um, how is it best? Uh, and what are common access patterns anyway? So these are all things we're going to want to discuss today. And then finally, we want to get quantitative here. It's not good enough to say that technique A wins and technique B loses. We'll actually want to say if one technique is better than another for, say, some given access patterns, we will want to measure by how much it's better. And these quantitative trade-offs are going to be important to us later when we talk about query optimization. So keep that in mind. So our goals today a big picture overhead for data access costs. Uh, this is not going to be super granular, but we are going to get enough details to understand what we need to understand. We will simplify our performance models, maybe oversimplify them in some cases, but it's going to help us provide insight. Our goal is not to get perfect performance, but to really understand what's going on. Still, even though I've given you that caveat, we want to use a bit of discipline here. We want to clearly identify our assumptions up front so that maybe someday we'll want to change them and refine those assumptions. And then given our assumptions, we are going to estimate the cost in a principled way. So where we're going to introduce our sort of sloppiness is in the assumptions and we'll make it very explicit. And then starting from those assumptions, we'll try to be disciplined uh, and principled. This kind of thinking is the foundation for query optimization. Um, we won't be able to choose the best way to run a query until we know uh, estimates of how long it takes to, to use different um, strategies for running that query. So when it comes to file access, uh, this is important for us to be able to measure the costs of these different schemes.